Hey guys, welcome back to Fruitfully Feminine. I'm Gabrielle and today I'm going to be doing a cover of Knickerbocker Glory out of the Harry Potter, the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Like the other three I've done, I actually have made this one. Like I said, when I was 16, I was trying to make everything in the recipe book. So I made probably like 10 or 12 of these recipes already. So I have made this and I've made my own notes of what I think did and didn't work, but I'm going to make it like the cookbook says and see if I still have the same complaints because I am a better chef from when I was 16. Hopefully. Well, I think probably it's gonna be the same answer, <laughs> but we'll see. Real quick, just in case anyone is wondering, I say it in every video, I don't believe magic is real. <laughs> Witchcraft is demonic, and I hope you don't actually think there's a school of wizards in Europe. Anywhere. <laughs> As always, I'm going to be using my handy wand to help me out today. Completely useless, it's just a, an accessory. Uh, I also have my Hufflepuff watch, which I think I wore in the last one. I'm a Hufflepuff. And today I'm donning my uh, Philosopher's Stone. I completely, none of this matches. I'm green and red and yellow. It does have a crack in it. That's kind of cool. <gasps> Can you see? Can you see the crack? No, you can't. She has a helpful hint section of the book. And actually a lot of these apply to this recipe. So, as always, you should read a recipe carefully before you start to make sure you have ingredients, equipment, and skills, and that like, if you need four hours or something, you don't make it an hour before you need the thing, <laughs> which this one does have something like that, and I a little bit, I'm gonna be pressed for time. We also have to temper, and her hint for that is the ice cream and custard recipes call for tempering egg yolks or making custard. This is a process by which the yolks are brought up to a higher temperature slowly to prevent curdling. So basically you don't wanna make scrambled eggs, so we'll go over that in the video. She says you need to measure things precisely. That's always, you need measuring for measuring cups for measuring dry things and liquid measuring cups for liquid things. Anyways, basically measure stuff or else it's gonna go whack. For the sake of the video, I always do exactly precise measurements. I don't actually do that when I'm cooking. I'm doing it to follow a cookbook to see if it works to rate it. Correctly. She also says many recipes call for toasting nuts. This one does. To do this properly, spread the nuts in a single layer on a baking sheet and toast in a 350 degrees oven for seven to 10 minutes until brown and fragrant. So we will be doing that as well. When I toast nuts, I usually actually fry them, but not fry them, I like saute them. I just put them in a pan and make it hot in the stove. No oil or butter or anything, but we will try doing the actual way you're supposed to toast them. This recipe is in chapter one of the cookbook. It's called Good Food with Bad Relatives. So this is all the food that's from Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon's house, basically whenever Harry is on a private drive and they eat something. This recipe has three parts. So we're gonna have to make three different things. We have to make homemade the whipped cream. We're gonna home make the custard and then we're gonna make the actual thing. I would say that it has five parts because I would include toasting the nuts as a separate thing. Uh, uh, that's kind of prep, but you do have to make jello for it. I guess, unless you buy your own jello. I wouldn't, yeah, I'm just gonna make it at home. <laughs> the recipe does say to prepare that in advance. So it says custard recipe follows, whipped cream recipe follows, and then it says jello prepare in advance. So we're gonna do those things now, and then when I come back from holding some babies, I'm gonna do the rest. The description for this recipe is Dudley pretends to cry when he discovers that Harry will have to come along with him on his birthday trip. Aunt Petunia, fooled by his antics, assures Dudley that she won't let Harry spoil his special day. Little does she know, but before the day ends in disaster, Harry enjoys the Knickerbocker glory he has been allowed to finish when Dudley complains his dessert doesn't have enough ice cream. So we can't put a lot of ice cream in this one. You know what I'm saying? And she says that is in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, chapter two. I'm going to read the paragraph in the book that this food occurs. So I've got my Philosopher's Stone. Mine says Sorcerer's Stone though. Ha ha, Sorcerer's Stone. Chapter two, mine is on page 26. Chapter two is the Vanishing Glass. So this is when the big python gets out. And I'm gonna read it in accent because it has been cringy every video that I did it and I can't stop now. Harry, am I gonna read like, there's so many different types of British accents, that's the problem. Like, Harry? Have you had a good... But then there's always like, Harry. <laughs> I'm gonna do that one, I'm gonna do that one. Harry had the best morning he'd had in a long time. He was careful to walk a little way apart from the Dursley so that Dudley and Piers, who were starting to get bored with the animals by lunchtime, wouldn't fall back on their favorite hobby of hitting him. They ate in the zoo restaurant, and when Dudley had a tantrum because his Knickerbocker glory didn't have enough ice cream on top, Uncle Vernon bought him another one, and Harry was allowed to finish the first. That's so sweet. 
themed. Here we go to eat them. Woo, woo. Harry has a good day even though he's abused. It's her little history tidbit. This is so fun. I love this. She always puts like a history or something about the recipe just that's kind of like cultural or historical. And I love this one. This is a terrific summer treat and easy to prepare. It's time to revive the Knickerbocker glory in America. This parfait-like dessert was first recorded in the United States in the 1930s, but instead of taking off here, it found its way across the ocean and became popular in England. How did it get its curious name? Some say from striped Knickerbockers. The layers of ice cream, jelly, custard, fruit, and whipped cream look like striped knee breeches. However, Knickerbockers was also a term used to refer to New Yorkers, so that might be a connection too. <laughs> That's so fun, I love that. For the actual recipe itself, you do need custard and whipped cream, which I'll go over that in a second. But for the Knickerbocker glory, here are the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need some sugar, and yes, my sugar is completely Harry Potter decorated. My mom did that. Um, same with my flour, brown sugar, and cocoa powder, so she's a sweetheart. Uh, you're gonna need cornstarch, which I've got a big boy of cornstarch. You're gonna need some salt. You're going to need some milk. I use whole milk because I'm awesome. And you're going to need eggs and vanilla. Next thing you're gonna need in the recipe is whipped cream, which we're gonna make with heavy whipped cream, powdered sugar, and vanilla. The ingredients for the actual Knickerbocker Glory are custard, whipped cream, so that's what we're gonna make. And then it is jello, which we're gonna make. Nuts toasted, which we're gonna do chopped peaches or berries it said and i was not about to try to pick between berries like raspberries blueberries strawberries and try to figure out what was best so i went with peaches just because she mentions that also it does say any flavored jello but i picked black cherry because it's the best um i don't know if it'll go well with this but it is the best flavor you're gonna need some vanilla ice cream i had some of this left over from like months ago someone made a shake or something i don't know and chocolate syrup, which I had to buy because I never have this stuff. Like half of it is on this receipt and it was $16.36. Add it up, even adding the things that I already had, I think the total would be around $35. And that's if you're buying salt and milk, like if you don't have those things in your house, eggs. I have started boiling a little thing of water for the Jello just to save time. And real quick, I do want to go over the notes that I wrote in the book when I was 16 because <laughs> I think it's important. So I wrote that this recipe is not my cuppa tea because they call it cuppa, haha, <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't make it again. I wrote yum next to the whipped cream recipe, so apparently that worked out. It was good. Next to the custard recipe, I wrote that the recipe doesn't work out ever for some reason. <laughs> I think I've made it three or four times because there is this custard recipe and other recipes. So I think I've made it and I was just like, I hate this. It's so bad. I wrote, either I can't make custard or this chick is bad at making custard. <laughs> I called women chicks. That's funny. I don't think you need any special tools in this. You just need basic kitchen stuff and I don't add those into cost. I added the lemon popsicle molds into the last one because a lot of people don't have popsicle molds, but this is basic saucepan, spoons, a strainer. So I'm not gonna do any cost. This does just total out to the 35 for the ingredients, which is awesome. I'm gonna grab a bowl, make some jello. I'm gonna add the jello, all of it, into this bowl. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> there. Just put it right on the stove. It smells so good. I love black cherry jello. I love black cherry everything. Everyone does. It's delicious. This is boiling now. This is boiling now, so I'm going to get a cup of it. This is a one-third cup measure, so I'm going to do this three times. It says to stir this for two minutes or until it's completely combined or dissolved. Why can't I speak to me? It almost has like a Dr. Peppery smell. Is that why I like Dr. Pepper so much? I haven't drank soda since like my junior year of high school, but I think it's Dr. Pepper. I bought some Dr. Pepper Jello. Now there are two ways to make Jello. There's a like quick way and a slow way. And I went the slow way because I have to be gone for my house for about three hours. I'm gonna go help a mama with her new baby. Well, I'm gonna help her with her older baby because she just had a new baby and I'm bringing her some food. So I have to be gone for about three hours and this says to set for four, so that's perfect for me. Uh, the other way is still 90 minutes, so 
I mean, I guess that's enough time if you started at the beginning, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the, the right way. Now, put some very cold water in it, a cup. <laughs> I normally don't tell you how much to do, just to protect the, uh, the author, Dinah, I think her name is. Yeah, Dinah. But this isn't her recipe, this is the recipe for Jello. So, refrigerate four hours or until um, we shall do. I guess I'll see you guys when uh, I get back. Okay, I just got back from many children and many pregnants. I'm just kidding, she wasn't pregnant, she had a baby. Okay, Jello in the fridge is actually set, but I'm not gonna take it out until I'm ready to assemble. I'm gonna do the custard and the nuts at the same time because I think it will be a time saver and that will cut down on the time a little bit. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to, I think it said 350. Yeah. Get a, a baking sheet out. Get a baking sheet out and then it says spread them in an even layer. <laughs> I didn't have very many. Did it. <laughs> So when the oven's done preheating, I'll put these in for seven to 10 minutes or until brown and fragrant. We'll see if this really is better than just throwing them in a saucepan for a couple minutes, but or not a saucepan, <laughs> a fry pan. And you actually only put a little bit of the sugar in at this time. Again, I don't want to say how much just because I don't want to share the recipe and get copyright claimed <laughs> for that. So you're going to put the sugar and cornstarch and salt all in a in a heavy bottom saucepan. Salt. Woo! I'm gonna stir up this sugar and salt and cornstarch. It looks like this. Milk. It says stir until the cornstarch dissolves, which I will say is a hard task because if you know the nature of cornstarch, when you add a liquid to it, it hardens. I actually don't know how to explain the chemistry or viscosity or anything about cornstarch. You just have to look it up or something or do it yourself. Basically just know making it dissolve is no small task. I think it's good. I can't feel anymore. Oh no, I found one. Now we're just gonna take the egg yolks. I can't really hide the amount well, so you wanna put the egg yolks and the sugar in a bowl and whisk them together. That is very easy. Oh, yolks, yolks. I about poured the white in. First try almost failed. I'm an idiot. Oh, the oven is preheated. Goodbye. Okay, we're gonna start with seven minutes. Let's see how smart she is. I'm gonna put the rest of the sugar into these yolks. And you take your yolks and you take your whisk into sugar and you do like this. Very easy. It says to cook it over medium high heat. I will do that. Listen, listen, I'll cook it over medium high, but when it burns, you know what I'm saying? This is fun. <laughs> Just waiting. <laughs> the oven's going and the yolks are whisked and this is just cold still. Okay, because I do it in every video and I'm bored, I'm gonna do it. See, the thing is, it's always a bad choice when I do it. <laughs> Probably should stop. It says until it bubbles or starts to thicken. Look what's on the end of my wand. The makings of custard, the beginnings of custard looks like a booger. It is bubbling and I think it is starting to thicken. Okay, it's very thick. I'm gonna turn to low. It says to reduce heat to low, which is the lowest setting on my burner. There is burnt milk at the bottom of the pan and it's very thick. I mean, it went from not bubbling to being bubbling and burning. Okay, medium high was too high. It's like pudding, see? I'm gonna leave it on low, and it wants me to take half a cup of this stuff and slowly pour it into the egg yolks while whisking the entire time. That's called tempering, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how I can get this with the camera and do it successfully. I only have one hand. <laughs> what great timing on the peanuts. Okay. Oven off. Peanuts blackened. Perfect. Just how we like them. No, they're brown. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay. Ready?
ready? Here we go, pour and whisk. I'm gonna do it. I personally think I did it successfully. I see no egg pieces. I remember last time it didn't turn out like this when I was like a kid, so when I was a kid, like four or five years ago. So I poured it back in, stirring constantly. Like it said, this is on low, but I think the burner's probably still hot because it is burning. Now it says, the audacity. It says turn the heat back up to medium high. What? Okay, I'm going in. It says stirring constantly but gently. If I'm gentle with this, it will burn. And it says stir it and like heat it until it thickens, but this is so thick. It says if you heat it too much, the cornstarch will lose its thickening power. I don't know if that's true, but here's the thing. It's freaking thick already. It's so thick, I'm just gonna go to the step where it says when it starts to thicken, because this is just, I mean, to me this is custard. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. It's like pudding. So I'm gonna remove the pan from heat, from the heat, like it says. Look at this. Is that not custard to you? That's kind of how it was before, I think. It smells kind of gross, to be honest. So now that your pan is off the heat, you gotta add in the vanilla, please. It's February here and I'm just not feeling like eating an ice cream thing, but also it's 60 degrees out, so I'm kind of feeling like eating ice cream. So I'm in a weird spot, but I like it. Now it wants us to strain this through a sieve into another bowl. This is why I didn't like the recipe, I remember now. It wants it you to not catch egg pieces, but this is so thick. To strain this through a sieve is freaking frustrating and takes forever and it doesn't really work. She does say it's easier with a rubber spatula, so I'll do that, but I promise you I did it with a rubber spatula last time and a way finer sieve than I own now and it was just so hard. So hard. Round one. Like I said. It'll just sit here because it's pudding. There's like you have to use a spatula because it's not liquid. Ugh, gross. Okay, whatever this is doing is working for me. Tip Gabrielle, next time you make custard, do this. Just circle it and keep pushing. Uh-oh. <laughs> circle it and keep pushing. And that is easy. This is going a lot better than when I was 18 or whatever, so... I'm thinking this is a success so far. Okay, that was actually pretty good. It was a success. There's kind of these gross little like brown bits. I think that's like burnt little pieces of custard. I don't know if you can tell, but it got those out of the custard. So I think we did something good. Last thing is you just have to cover it with plastic um, so that a skin doesn't form and chill it until it's set. You're thinking, what does that mean? I don't know either. It's kind of set to me, but just wrap it real good in that plastic wrap, put it in the fridge. I'm gonna go eat lunch while it sets, play some video games maybe, and then we'll come back and finish it. Hopefully soon. I just wanna be done. All right, custard has cooled, jello is done, nuts are toasted. I think we should start. So we're actually gonna make the whipped cream now and then launch into it, but yeah, basically we're on the final steps. So to make the whipped cream, it says place the heavy cream, sugar, and vanilla in a mixing bowl and whip until firm peaks form and stay in place when you lift up the beater and turn the bowl upside down. Oh no! What? I am gonna put on an apron because whipped cream always gets on me. <laughs> it's hard to whip cream and not get it kind of everywhere. So I'm using one of my deepest bowls, but mostly because I'm out of all my other ones. These are pretty stiff peaks and I'm not about to make butter. So here we go. <laughs> I think it's gonna spill no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's stiff, right? It's just, okay. Okay, it stayed. I 
I'm impressed. I was really afraid that wasn't gonna work. You should always eat some for good measure. Next step is chopping the nuts and the fruit. So I'm gonna do both. They chop really easily because of the burntness. They're like all soft. Our first step is done. Prepare the custard, whipped cream, <laughs> I'm eating peanuts still, and jello in advance. Chop and toast the nuts ahead as well. Done. Second step, wash and if necessary, peel and chop the fruit you're using. I don't really peel my peaches. Maybe that's weird to you. I just washed them. Uh, also, it's February, so it's not really peach season. So I'm gonna chop these and hope for the best. Yeah. I got three because the recipe calls for two cups. The problem is the recipe serves six. It's to make six of these. So I think I'm just gonna chop up one actually. I've got peaches and nuts and the next step is to assemble our sundae. I was gonna say shake. Um, so let's go do that. It goes ice cream, fruit, jello, custard. So ice cream. I don't want to waste this because I just, I remember what it was like from years ago and I don't want to eat this. I'm also not a big fruit and dessert person, so I just already don't like it a lot. I think that's a good amount. It needs to look like a layer though. Does that? Yeah. I want to make it pretty though because I do want it to look like a sock. A knickerbocker. Then I'm going to take some of the fruits. better but not great not great let's go another one kind of fix that right there yeah that's just gonna have to do now custard guys this turned out gross <laughs> okay here's the custard it's like not liquid I definitely think it was on too high or something whatever the thing is custard's weird who eats custard anyway <laughs> Okay, now I'm just mocking English people. I feel like I'm not gonna be proud enough of this video to even put it up. <laughs> Great. Look at how bad this glass looks. It just looks disgusting. Let's try some of our jello. Oh wow. It would be a perfect reflection. Good thing cleaning up jello is just as easy as picking it up. This was on the ground. Yuck. Ah! <laughs> Stop! Oh gosh. Oh no, it was supposed to go jello and then custard. Custard was the last one. Mm. <sighs> okay. I thought it was a little weird that jello was on top. I was wrong, but at least I was consistent. I was consistently wrong. I have this. <laughs> Time for some whipped cream. At least we know this tastes good. And it says toasted nuts, so I'm just gonna let this table be ruined then. I've already decided. Can you imagine getting served this at a zoo? British people are so extra. <gasps> now for the chocolate syrup. Here we go. Ready for the big spill. I'm gonna do it in a bowl first. Okay, it's not open. <laughs> Great, guys. For the video. I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this. One bite at a time. I'm gonna go whipped cream, nuts, and syrup. I don't like chocolate syrup, by the way. 
I've got some Jello and custard. I will say the custard doesn't taste bad when you get the Jello with it. I'm going for a full bite every layer. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. There's so much going on. The peaches and the Jello don't really work. I think because the Jello's a really strong flavor and the peaches are a light flavor. The custard I think is actually good. The whipped cream is delicious. The nuts give it a fun crunch. The jello texture is a good juxtaposition to the melty ice cream. The best word for this is a mouth party. <laughs> it's like everything all at once. It's a lot. I think I'm a fan. I kind of like it. I wouldn't order it probably. Well, no, I don't think I would. So this took about 55 minutes, 50, 55. Basically this took less than an hour. Um, I don't think that's probably worth it. A custard just takes so long to make. And, that, and that's not if you, if you don't count the like four hours for Jell-O. I'm not counting four hours to set because I was doing other things in that time. It's just, this is just, <laughs> I guess I get ordering it at a zoo if your parents are treating you for your birthday and you're already a spoiled brat. You know what? I gotta say, ability to follow, five out of five. I think the recipe is simple. It read great, I understood everything, and I basically did everything right, I'm pretty sure. As for the outcome, taking what happened to the custard into consideration and it just not tasting amazing, it's just kind of there and since it's any flavor jello it's like would this be good with lime lemon like probably not i don't know so i'm gonna say four out of five so overall that is a nine out of ten wow that seems high but that's a 90 percent or an a minus and you know i really don't think i'd make it in the future but if I did, I wouldn't be too mad about it. <laughs> that is all, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have a lot to clean up, so I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> I hope you make something out of this cookbook and enjoy it. And if you make this, lower the heat on the custard or buy custard, probably just buy custard. It's not worth it. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day or week or month or whenever I see you again. I'll see you guys next time in another Christian video. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.